Hello, sisters. Welcome to the Sacred Medicine Podcast, weaving powerful, soulful practices into functional medicine. Step into this beautiful space of devotion and explore everything from nurturing foods, rituals, sexuality, and awakening your innate sensuality. It is time to own your radiance. This is the Sacred Medicine Podcast. Listening to the Sacred Medicine Podcast. I am your host, Margaret Romero, and today we're doing something a little different. I wanted to share with you one of my rituals that I do. Gosh, I think I've been doing this for at least four years. A ritual that I do at the end of every year. And I tend to do it around this time. So today is December 30th. I just did this on a live on Instagram. So you can find it there as well. And it is a way that I kind of recap the year and usher in the new year with my desires and hopes for the new year. So what you will need to start with is, well, first of all, get into a comfy place, light a candle, have, if you have different colored markers, that would be great. And definitely a journal. And I love to start with a new one. And you'll need, and I actually have started like a completely new journal. So this is, this journal is only for these rituals that I have on every year. So you may want to start a new one because I don't like to incorporate it in any other journal because it sort of gets lost. So I have a brand new journal that I keep for only doing these rituals. I have my candle lit and, um, you probably, you obviously can't smell, but I've got some essential oils going on over here. I've got my water, I've got some tea, and I also have my multicolored pens. So you may want to add this as well. It's, it's totally up to you. So I do this every year and I've been doing this now for maybe the past I believe like four or five years and I love it because it gets this kind of like recap the entire year and I'm going to show you what I do because it's such a good way to reflect on the year and I know that this year has been like the absolute worst so I just want to kind of recap things because I know that it's been really hard for everyone, but there are a lot of good things that have come out of it. Maybe for a lot of people, I have heard so many people say that they um, started businesses, that they had babies, that they moved into a beautiful place or they left the city and they moved upstate to a place they always loved to, to, you know, to live. So why don't we start, get started? Because I'm so excited. Now, if you don't have, I'm probably only going to stay on for like maybe 30 minutes to kind of give you a rundown. So you may want to just jot this down on a piece of paper and then go back to it and kind of do it slowly because it does take a little bit of time. My recommendation is to do it, um, like I said, with if you have, you know, a bunch of different colored pens or pencils or markers, get your candle, get some time when it's quiet and let's get started. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is... Let me see, where's my paper? The first thing you want to do is label the page and put January, February, March, all the way through December. You may want to leave like a line in between. So let me show you. Well, this one I didn't leave. This one was from 2016. So you see how I just have it January, February, March. Okay. And, And you may want to leave one space in between in case there were a lot of things that were going on. Now, In the past, I would go through my phone to look at, okay, what happened in in March? Oh, that's right. In March, I went on vacation or in February. That's right. I went to Miami. I went to a conference. And so what I do is I will have two different colors and the positive things will be like for this year, the positives were in this kind of like a blue turquoise And the not so good things were in red. And so it kind of 
will point things out like, oh my God, the red, like you don't want to, you kind of want to have like a little, like in a couple of years, look back and be like, oh my God, the red, what happened then? And you'll, it just kind of sticks out or whatever colors you want to use. And so you're going to go through the highs and the lows of each single month. If you started a business, that's going to be in green or make it just a different color to stand out from what happened that may have not been so good. So you want to go through every month. And what I do is if you have a paper calendar or whether you have a calendar that's on your phone, you want to be able to go through each month and just think about what may have happened, right? Okay. So that's the first step. And this may take maybe 15 minutes or 20 minutes to do. Okay. So once you've had all of these written down, then the next thing you want to do is you want to write a whole paragraph about the lessons you learned from whatever happened, whatever you learned, whatever lessons came from that month, from each month. You don't have to have a separate paragraph for each month, but the total of everything that happened for the entire year, what did you learn? What came out of it? And I think this is a really good thing because sometimes, I mean, I think for the most part, a year will come and it'll go and you'll kind of forget about it. But this is like a way to be able to be like, oh my God, yeah, that's right. That's what I did or didn't do or my God, I just, I learned that I, you know, um, shouldn't have opened that business or that was the best idea ever. So you want to, you definitely want to know what the lessons, you know, what, when the lessons were for the entire year. So that'll be a paragraph. Then you move on. So for me, it took a couple of paragraphs and you learn some things and it's great because we learn from everything, good and bad things that have happened. So you want to be able to kind of document it. You want to reflect on the lessons you learned. Not everything may have been so bad. And when you're like, oh God, that's right. That didn't work out, but this is what I learned from it. And so I think that life is just that way. When things may or may not work out, what you, how the way you envision it to work out, there's still a lesson that you want to learn from it. Okay. So then the next thing now, all right, grab your pen and paper, by the way, this is going to be a podcast. As you can see, I'm recording right now and I'm going to bring, I'm going to have it all out outlined for you. So you can, you don't, if you don't have a pen and paper or you're driving or what have you, then you'll have it all that you can see everything and you can just do it on your own. But I really, you know, I, I would prefer if you did this either by the end of this year or actually if you did it, I don't know, maybe within the first month of January, first week, sorry, first week of January. I think that would be such a good time to do it rather than kind of waiting like and putting it off and putting it off and putting it off, you know, just kind of wrap up 2020 and let's get started on 2021. Okay. So the next part, you, I have a list here. You're going to put another list. I have a different color here of all the things. So I have friendship, family, sex, spirituality, finances, career, love, health, self-expression, giving, personal development, and quality of life. So what you want to do with this is you want a number from one to 10 for all of these. So like, let's say career one to 10, where do you feel like you are in there? Is it like your career is like amazing? It's a 10. If it's like, Oh, I'm still struggling to get my career going. Maybe it would be like a two or a three or four, whatever it is that you number. And so when you have it all written down here, you want to number things. Okay. Uh, all the way on the right side, just put a number to it. And what I did was I wrote like a little note next to it. So this year, this was 2016. My spirituality was a 10 because I, and it would still be a 10 today because I feel like my practices, I'm really connected to my spirituality, right? You get what I'm saying, right? Okay. And then if it's health, let's say this year was not a good year for your health, then maybe it was a two or a three, depending on whatever was happening. And then you want to put a little something like, um, this was okay. A couple years ago. So f this was 2016. My health was in a, a four 
And I put down here, need to lose weight, stop sugar, exercise more, more hot yoga. So in that year, it was a four for me. And so that's like, I just wrote a little note, like what do I want to do. And then in 2016, for self-expression, I have a nine. And then I put down podcast and my weekly wisdom. I was, I used to do on Fridays, um, a weekly wisdom. No, sorry. What was it called? Wisdom for the weekend. Wisdom for the weekend. It was on a Friday and it was like maybe five minutes of a little kind of, um, a little piece of wisdom, like something to think about. And, um, I should get back to doing that, but I kind of started doing more like women's health women's, uh, Wednesdays. So, so do you know what I'm saying? So you want to, and so there's three, six, nine, ten, there's 12. There's a list of 12 different things that you're going to number from one to 10. Okay. Then what you're going to do is, all right, what you want to do is, so then you're going to create a vision for 2021 and you're really going to want to think about what it is that you want for your life for 2021. Do you want to move? Do you want to find a new job? Do you want to get in shape? Do you want to, um, visit your family more? Do you want to, whatever it is, whatever it is. And you want to be able to write that down. And for me, this, um, my vision. So on the top, I wrote vision it would be for you vision 2020, 2021, I'm sorry, 2021. And then you're going to write a list one through whatever. And for this one year here, 2017, I had eight things that I wanted to accomplish for the year, um, health wise. And what you would do is those things that you listed initially here, the friendship, family, sex, spirituality, all of those things, the ones that were numbered with the lower numbers, like one through maybe five, like the ones that are nine and 10, you're good. Like you don't necessarily need to focus or work on that because you're already not eight, nine or 10. You don't need to worry about those. But the ones that were lower, maybe one through four, one through five, what do you want to do? Okay. So for me, what was the low one there? Um, let's pick one. Okay. So like that health one, I need to lose weight. So then what I do is my vision for 2021, if it was health and it said, I said, look, it's only four. This was several years ago. It was four. Okay. So what am I going to do about it for 2021? And so I wrote down here, lose 15 pounds, stop sugar, start doing hot yoga, infrared sauna, healthy eating. I put a little V for, you know, more veggie and that, so all the low numbers that you have, so anything between like one and six, let's just say, or one and five, you want to say, okay, well, what do I want to do? Why is this number so low? Like, let's say a family was low. Okay. So then what do you want to do bringing in 2021 for family? Does that mean that you want to visit and be around your family more? Is it that you want to contribute to your family more? Like, what is it to help you boost that number? You know, I guess, I mean, I don't really believe that there's always like 10 throughout every single thing. I mean, that would be a little hard to do. And so what I think we should do is let's be realistic as well. You don't have to be like, okay, this is what all like the 15 things I'm going to do for my health. You may or may not be able to do all 15. Pick a few things that you'll do to change. And as I can see here, okay, so this was my 2017 vision. And so I did it the end of 2016. And so looking back at this now, I'm like, oh yeah, okay, yeah, I totally lost the weight. I stopped eating sugar. I I remember that year I did a lot of hot yoga. I did a ton of hot yoga, three or four days a week. I still am doing infrared sauna. I and I and I my eating healthy stuck. Like it's has stuck through all of these years. So I can look back now and be like, oh wow, okay. So I really I accomplished all of that and I did lose the weight and I started eating total totally super healthy. 
All right. So then once you do that, because it's kind of like your plan for 2021, the next thing you want to do is that you want to pick a few words that you want for 2021. And at this point in time, in 2017, I wrote the words like freedom and generosity, focus, purposeful action, connection, adventure, pleasure. And so you want to pick some words that you want to focus on for the year. And it doesn't have to be this many. It's just that I had so many things in my mind. I'm like, cause I, I do find myself, you know, one of the, one of the things that I feel like I don't do enough, honestly, is that I don't play enough. I don't feel like I create time or space for play. And, um, oh, which other rituals do you include in this notebook? Oh, well, this is a totally, this is a writing, this is more like a writing workshop. So you're really sort of thinking a lot about what it is that you're leaving behind, the lessons you learned, and then what you want for the coming year, which I think a lot of people maybe go into a year and they're just like, whatever happens, happens. I don't know. Exercise. Yeah, I should lose weight, but I don't know. Or, yeah, you know, I want a business, but who knows? And this is like, you're like writing this down for you. If a business is something you want to start, then at least you have like a list of things that you can maybe think about work on. Like, oh my God, that's right. I did want to do that. I wanted to do this one thing and this will be the year that I can start planning it. And then after that, you have something written down where you can start working on it, like little steps towards it or start looking things up to try to figure out how you can make that happen. All right. So let's see. Oh yeah. And so, okay, let me give you another example from this list in my vision for 2017 was, um, under generosity was, um, give monthly to Kiva and Kiva. I don't know if you guys have heard of Kiva. It's like a, um, it's a place where you can donate money to entrepreneurs, to people all over the world. And I do donate to that, but I had to write it down and I had to put it in my phone. Once a month, I would put it in on a Friday because that was the day I would get paid. And I would say, give to Kiva, donate to Kiva. And then I'd go online. I think it's kiva.org if you were ever interested. So I typically tend to give to women entrepreneurs all over the world. I've given to women in Honduras, Peru, um, like Somalia, places like that. And so every month it'll be a different woman that I give to. And you don't have to give a ton, you know what I mean? But, um, and I find where somebody is like near their goal and I want them to like get their money. And so that's typically what I do. I look for women who are almost near their goal. And so then I add to it so they can get even closer to it. Or sometimes I will add the rest of what is left. And so then they can now get their donation. Okay. So that was one of the things I wrote in 2017. And so I still have been doing that every year. It's just become like a thing now. It's like part of my life. It's what I do. And it's funny because I even look back all the way to 2017, you know, but to see that that was one of the things that I wanted to do for 2017. And here it is. I'm still doing it. It's kind of cool, actually. Okay. So then you pick a word and my word, typically one of my words is always freedom only because I really love Hi, only because, um, freedom is like the thing that I, it's like my, I don't, whoops. Uh Oh, somebody called me. Sorry about that. Um, freedom is like one of the things that I really, I try to figure out how can I have as much freedom as I, as I can. I mean, during this pandemic, I, I'm like, all right, I'm not, I'm sorry, but I just can't stay home because it, it like, there's something in me that's always needing to have some form of freedom. And I went away for end of May. I drove, I don't know if you remember me posting about this, but I drove down to Atlanta to see family. And I was also looking at, um, this area that I was thinking about maybe moving to or, um, buying property in. 
in Georgia. And so I did that. I drove down. I was like, I don't care. I don't have to fly anywhere. Let me just drive. Oh, it's going to take me 14 hours to get there. Okay, fine. But I ended up stopping kind of halfway and stayed with a girlfriend of mine. Anyway, so freedom is always my number one word of the year. And so I don't know. I don't, I have to, when I do this actual ritual, I'm going to, I may do it today. Um, or I may do it January 1st. Cause that tends to be a typically quiet day. Everyone's off. It's, um, I don't work this year in January, you know, being a nurse practitioner in the past, I have definitely worked holiday time. I've definitely given my life to when I was in RN, especially when I worked in the emergency room, you have to work a few holidays per year. Like it's a must. So I've definitely worked Christmas day, Christmas Eve, New Year's Eve, um, New Year's day. I'm actually working at the clinic tomorrow, New Year's Eve, only until five. So it's not too bad. So I have to think about my word for this year and it, you know, I don't know if I, it like another word that I've always loved is adventure and that may be hard with what the hell, who knows what the hell's going to happen this year. All right. So you pick what you want for this year. I mean, for 2021, your word, and you kind of always think about that word, that word, put it somewhere, write it down on a post-it, put it on your refrigerator because you always want to be able to, or if it's generosity, then it kind of reminds you like, okay, so what am I going to do this month? Who am I going to give to? And it doesn't necessarily need to be to Kiva. Maybe you are um, helping a friend out, or maybe you are giving a generous gift to a family member, or maybe you are, or a friend's going through a hard time and you want to get them something. I think that, oh, I love the word truth. Oh yeah, that is very good. I love that. So I think it's, going to be different this year. Adventure. I would love it to be adventure. I love, I would love that word every single year as well, but I'm not sure what's going to be going on this year. If there's going to be lockdown with the vaccine thing, you guys know how, how I feel about the vaccine. All right. So other places where, you know, you write down what you want for 2021. And the other things that I have also added are May or may not be possible this year, um, but I've also written, this is a different year, um, places I want to visit. Travel is really big for me. It's um, a big part of my life. And so I write down, okay, can I make any of these things happen? And I did, I can look at my list now. When was this for? Okay, this was for 2020. For 2020, I wanted to go to, oh, I didn't get to go anywhere. Turks, Tahiti, Greece, Spain, or Alaska. Um, and those didn't happen. I went to Miami. I went to Georgia and actually I was going to go, oh, Turks is not going to be until maybe next month. I don't know if I'm going there yet. Um, so none of these things happened. Who knew that this was all going to be our life. And, um, some of these still hold true for me. And I think I may end up going away possibly next month. I'm not sure yet. Then the other things I wrote are things I wanted to do. And you may want to write that like, uh, let's see what I did here. Okay. So cooking classes was my thing and photography class. And both of those things I have done already. They've been online. They were not in person. Um, I love um, in-person cooking classes. And I also love, I also wanted to do a food photography class, but I also did those online this year. So those two things I did, what else? Um, oh, there was a couple of retreats, but those didn't happen this year. And there was also, oh, um, conferences, which didn't happen this year. You know, they were actually, no, the, this particular one was not online this year. So that didn't happen. So that's it. That's, that's really, you, you kind of wrap up 2020 in a way that is through, you know, you go through every month and you find out what happened during those months. And I think it's a good way to kind of see it, to write it down and, and kind of, um, 
look at every year like, oh my God, I can't believe I went through that that year. Or because we're all going to look back on 2020 and we're all going to be like, oh my God, well, we got through that year and oh yeah, look at that. Look what happened in June or look what happened in July. And so you write it down, the good and the bad, and then the lessons you learned from it. Because we all, you know, like I said, we're always learning through everything that we're going through. So that's it. I hope you guys enjoy this. I will have it written down. And it's going to be a podcast, which most likely will be coming out tomorrow, I believe. It should be coming out tomorrow. And I'm going to have it written down there. And this will be on... This will be on my IGTV. I will save this. And so you can always go back and listen to it. And that's it. So I'm going to probably most likely either do this today or I'm going to do it on January 1st, which tends to be a quiet day for me. I really love January 1st. Um, I'm not a bit, I'm not at all like a drinker. Um, if anything, I may have one who knows for um, New Year's Eve. I don't know. It's not a thing. I like I, they used to be, I used to go to Kupalu and I used to meditate my way into the new year. No drinking. I, I was meditating and that's what I've done for several years. I haven't done, um, oh yeah, I definitely see the positive. Diagnosis with lupus have found you and are getting healthier. Oh, that's so great. I love that. Oh yes, the categories. Um, those categories where you're going to number one through 10. Is that, is that the categories you're meaning? Um, it's friendship, family, sex, spirituality, finances, career, love, health, self expression, giving or generosity. You can either one personal development, and quality of life. Um, so, okay, good. <laughs> um, so that's it. Thank you so much for being here today. And this is just something I do every single year. I wanted to share it with you. I've never shared this before, really, not even with friends. I just sort of something I just did. I've listened to other people's, I, I, um, other people's way of doing this and so I've incorporated theirs into this and it's been just a really nice way to start the year reflect on 2020 and um, plan for 2021 though we don't really know what's happening but it's always good to kind of have a plan of what it is that you want Thank you so much for joining me today. Have a blessed rest of your day. Happy New Year. Okay, so, hi. Okay, so I also created a outline of everything I just spoke about. So you can easily access this and you'll find it in the show notes. And you'll be able to see exactly what I spoke about. So from the beginning to the end, it's sort of like a sequence because I'd love to wrap up initially the every month. I love doing that. It kind of makes me see what happened every month and kind of gives you a really big picture of what the year was like, 2020. I mean, for a lot of us, it was probably like a lot of Zoom calls and um, staying at home and whatnot. But I'm sure that there were also some very difficult times. And you want to just acknowledge them that you went through that. And I think that, I think that's a great, it's a beautiful step to kind of see the year as a whole. And then we go through each, all the other steps that follow it. So I'm, I'm going to have that link in the show notes and you'll be able to access that and then start working on that and make sure that you create some quiet time when you're doing this. And just be really comfortable and set, you know, a couple of candles around if possible. Maybe have some really soft music in the background. This this to me is a ritual. It's a ritual and I create the atmosphere and space for that. So 
That's what I do. Now you don't necessarily need to do that, but when you're going back and you're really writing down the lessons and you're writing down some of the things you want to create for the new year, you really want to have that time and that space to really focus on this rather than being interrupted a million times or doing it when there's like a bunch of people around or loud music or loud TV. You just want to create a nice, you know, a nice space for this and time to do this. And typically I do it very end of December or I do it on January 1st. So if you can squeeze in some time or find some time, that would be, that would be amazing. All right. Well, I hope you enjoyed this. For me, this is a ritual I do every single year and you may decide to just hold on to that journal or just Pick one place where you're always doing this every year so you have a place to look back on it. All right, enjoy it, and I will talk to you all next week. Bye for now.